So it's a great pleasure. Welcome to today's Pretty Quantum Science Engineering Institute Seminar. So today's speaker is Dr. Jassy Ying from Princeton University, where he is currently a postdoc uh, in Zahi Hassan's group. Um, Jashing is an experimentalist. Uh, actually, his main expertise is using STN to study uh, quantum materials, such as super novel superconductors and topological materials and others. Uh, he got his PhD in 2016 from Institute of Physics of Chinese Chemical Science in Professor Hong Ding's group, um, who I think visited us two or three years ago and uh, actually talked a lot about your work, I think. He did a brief experiment uh, observing the Marana zero and the HMOs in iron uh, to mean selenite, one of the pretty fun experiments uh, to you know, he published two years ago. And in this he uh, continued to work on uh, a variety of very interesting uh, materials, particularly topolo new novel topological material quantum magnets to the nature papers recently. So, the, and he's uh, also working to the new project with Sahi on the Quantum Science Center with Oak Ridge. So we have, may have some colleagues from here joining the seminar today. So welcome, Jashin, uh, uh, if you can take from here. Thank you very much. Thank you. So um, today, uh, instead of focusing on uh, several um, specific experiments, I will um, broadly discuss the capability of STM in advancing uh, the topological material research. So my title would be uh, turning into the emergent topological matter. So first I will briefly introduce what is the uh, emergent topological matter. So topological matter has recently formally been written into several textbooks, including this uh, modern condensed matter physics. Since the 1980 discovery of the quantum Hall effect, quantum topology has really uh, fundamentally shifted our understanding of quantum matter and more and more topological quantum materials have been discovered and researched in detail. These topological quantum materials often feature three classes of phenomenon. The first class is that they often have topological fermions. These topological fermions take the Dirac while or while solution of the quantum field theory that is familiar with the high energy physics. Secondly, they often have symmetry protected bulk boundary correspondence that widely links most of the condensed matter experimental techniques that can be sensitive to the bulk or the boundary or both. Thirdly, if we further um, perform chemical engineering or electri uh, electrical uh, gating, this material can often exhibit quantized electronic excitations, including the recently actively researched uh, quantum anomalous Hall effect. So after decades of effort into research of weakly interacting topological materials, people start to look at the topological materials with stronger interactions. These materials often have the phenomenon of superconductivity and magnetism. And these two types of phenomena often overlap another uh, actively researched area that is uh, correlated electrons, including the physics of high, uh, high temperature superconductivity and the spintronics. And the correlated electron systems often emphasize the physics of emergence. So that gives us experimentalists more opportunities to observe uh, some of the unexpected uh, phenomena. On theoretical side, there are also clear directions that is to looking for the topological order or quantum manning body entanglement. But how do we address the uh, quantum manning body entanglement by spectroscopic method? That is still a frontier question. So to my understanding, the magnetic field can uh, be a strong perturbation to these topological materials with stronger interaction. Uh, first is that phenomenologically we can think that um, the magnetic field can strongly suppress superconductivity and tuning the magnetism uh, in a material. On the fun fundamental side, we can see that the quantum magnetic flux is H over E, while the quantum Hall conductance is related to E square over H. So they are both governed by the more uh, fundamental constant. 
including the plant constant and the elemental charge. So there is a deep connection. On the other hand, the vector tunability of the magnetic field is also very powerful in that for electronic materials, the vector magnetic field can often introduce a Lorentz force. And that force can further interact with the clarity of electronic matter. And STN uh, happens to be a great state of art spectroscopic technique that can operate under a strong vector magnetic field. So for STM technique, the most uh, important concept is about the quantum tunneling principle. And the powerfulness of this technique roots in the capability of probing the local density of states of a quantum material through measuring the turning conductance, or we call it DIDV signal. For typical STM systems, uh, we can apply a strong magnetic field along the z-axis, as strong as 18 Tesla uh, commercially. For implant wise now commercial um, systems can have as large as five Tesla vector magnetic field. In our lab, uh, we now have a nine Tesla z-axis field and two Tesla vector magnetic field. The STM data structure is also very uh, straightforward, which uh, constitute of three parts. First, we can utilize the precise scanning motion, scanning motion of the STM tip to probe the surface profile of a, a quantum material. Here I use cobalt tin, uh, recently discovered topological quantum material as an uh, elaboration. For this material, the STM signal resolves two uh, dominant surfaces. If for, uh, for this topographic image, if we zoom into the upper territories, we find it actually formed by the tin honeycomb lattice. If we zoom into the lower territories, we found it, act it actually formed by the cobalt 3 tin 1 Kagome lattice. So uh, each of the atoms in this material can be fully uh, resolved by the STM technique. And the lattice geometry resolving capability is also very unique. And we can further pro pro uh, probe their respective quantum topology that will be discussed in later. And uh, so, so I'm just yeah. curious. Uh, so this material, cobaltin, is hard to cleave into a very flat surface. You have lots of these kind of, um, uh, ridges or wires or steps on the surface? Uh, yeah, uh, the, because of cleaving force, the usually uh, it's a hexagonal type of symmetry. So we can have 120 degree boundaries usually. And this is one of the domain. Uh, one of the um, domain that shows the preferred direction uh, along this axis. But uh, uh, this is already a very clean cleaving surface. If it's not clean, then we won't be able to resolve the atom uh, for material. So this is already a reasonable uh, cleaving. But you, you are right, it's a um, more 3D-like material. It's not formed by the Van der Waals force. So it's hard to cleave and hard to generate a, a large piece of uh, flat, atomic flat area like um, tungsten diselenide. Yeah, that is not comparable. And secondly, we can uh, utilize the spectroscopic uh, method to probe the local density of states and each of the spatial position. And then we can obtain a DIDV map. Uh, for an energy slice of this DIDV map is displayed here near the Fermi energy, where we can uh, see readily that the, these two kinds of terminations or lattices have dramatically different density of states behavior. Particularly uh, for the lower ter Kagome territories, we observe that this ring-like signals, that is arising from the quasi-particle interference caused by the defects. So a Fourier transform of these uh, ring-like signals will, we can obtain a momentum uh, scattering information, and we call it a quasi-particle interference pattern. 
So the topographic image, DIDV spectral, and DIDV map uh, together constitute the typical STM data structure. So the, in the following discussion, we'll uh, I'll elaborate how would these signals um, be connected to the elusive quantum topology. The STM technique um, in this research area can often be compared with other complementary techniques, uh, including photo emission and magneto uh, transport. For example, we can uh, directly compare the STM obtained local density of states with the momentum integrated photo emission signal. We can compare the energy gaps measured by STM and the photo emission, including its gap anisotropy and uh, the gap of disappearing temperature. We can also compare with the magneto transport uh, with the, especially on the phase transitions. We can also um, compare the magnetic field response of the electronic dense structure with uh, STM perturbed by field and magneto transport. For, for any spectroscopic technique, um, we can think how can we obtain information effectively. So to my understanding, as an ordinary person, we can often obtain information from the two-dimensional exotic patterns or one-dimensional spectroscopic peaks. And the, the Landau uh, the, and the quasi-particle interference method happens to be a great method that can generate a lot of uh, exotic 2D patterns for the constraint of the data interpretation. So since the early research of the quasi-particle interference uh, by pioneer STM groups, it has been established um, that the quasi-particle interference, interference fundamentally roots in the defects induced fragile oscillations in a quantum material. And uh, this, if we further perform a Fourier transform of this oscillation signal, then we can obtain a Q vector. In momentum space, this Q vector essentially connects two different momentum. That is to say Q equals to K2 minus K1 or K1 minus K2. And we often only consider elastic scattering processes. And in momentum space, there are three key selection rules to consider. Uh, for the charge, is, it is simply the Fermi golden rule that whenever there is a large charge density, then the scattering probability is larger. And for the spin, we often consider that the scattering between reversal spin states should be forbidden, especially for the non-magnetic impurity assisted quasi-particle interference. Similar to the spin, the scattering between orthogonal orbitals should also be forbidden. So one of the uh, clear example is the uh, quasi-particle interference in bismuth and antimony, where people observed rich quasi-particle interference patterns. And that can be directly compared with the spin and angle result for the emission results. For this material, photo emission results have shown that there consists of three Fermi surfaces. And each of them has a carol spin texture. And if we consider aforementioned spin and charge selection rule, then along the gamma m direction, there are only three allowed three uh, allowed scattering vectors. That is associated with the uh, scattering of the same spin states. So that is indeed well, consistent well, with the, uh, yeah. Uh, is there a question? Maybe not, just proceed, oh, please. Okay. Yeah, so, so the um, STM data happens to very consistent with such a scenario that this uh, three dominant uh, scattering vectors is resolved. So then in this case, the STM data is a strong support that this material can indeed feature a carol spin texture, which is a, a direct manifestation of the underlying Z2 quantum topology. 
as said, another rich uh, for source for uh, data con a constraint is from or ob uh, information obtained is from the one dimensional spectroscopic peaks and long quantization happens to be a great method to generate a sequence of spectroscopic peaks. And the longer quantization of uh, uh, electrons has uh, been resolved in other materials, including uh, 2D electron gas system, graphite, graphene systems, uh, prior to the study of topological materials. And a key notion in topological materials is uh, the Landau quantization of Dirac fermion. So in contrast to the Landau quantization of a parabolic band, the Dirac fermion's Landau quantization uniquely features a zero uh, Landau level. And the energy of this zero Landau level does not shift with the magnetic field. For higher Landau level sequences, it has a square root dependence for the Landau level sequence as well as the magnetic field strength. So one clear example is uh, in bismuth selenide where people use STM to generate um, a lot of uh, spectroscope peaks and then uh, under a magnetic field. And uh, it can be identified that this uh, energy as this spectroscopic peak generated by field does not shift with the magnetic field strength. I mean, its energy does not shift. So that is a clear indication of the zeros lambda level. And subsequently, people can identify higher lambda level sequences. So the zeros lambda level has a fundamental implication in that if we can uh, tune the chemical, uh, chemical potential across the zeros lambda level, then there must be a half integer quantum Hall effect. That is indeed later on uh, realized by a transport London quantization experiment where people identified the uh, half integer quantum Hall effect contribute from uh, one of the surface. And London quantization can also be applied to topological materials with bro broken symmetry. For example, in this light tin selenite uh, topological crystalline insulator people observed uh, three sets of uh, land, zero cylinder level. So that is consistent with the scenario that this material may feature both the massless direct fermion and massive direct fermions. So the massive direct fermion contribute to the additional two sets of zero cylinder level. So with uh, a powerful technique of quasi-particle interference and long level quantization, then uh, STM researchers often made with an embarrassing question. That is, uh, the STM research of topological materials open fall behind for emission or transport or first, pre uh, first principle predictions. So how do we use our technique to firstly identify a topological phenomenon or topological material become an urgent question. So arguably, the topological correspondence can be a powerful guideline for the STM discoveries. So, so first, the to uh, important topological correspondence is a bulk boundary correspondence that has been appreciated since the early research of the quantum Hall effect. For example, in this pa old paper, its title is chain number and age states in the integer quantum Hall effect. The chain number is a bulk topological environment and the age states is a boundary mode. And STM technique happens to uh, be very powerful to directly visualize the step age states for example, in bismuth uh, crystal, this or film, people have indeed identified a robust age states. So that is an um, early experimental indication that this material may feature a non-trivial topology. Another recently appreciated uh, correspondence is a one-year blotch correspondence. So essentially, that is to say the global topological uh, environment can be encoded in the local chemical bonding or the local orbitals. So through the research into the local orbital, then we can obtain the information about the global topological environment. So we're still designing better STM experiment uh, along these directions. 
And later on, I'll talk about uh, one project that is close to uh, such correspondence that is we uh, directly use STM to resolve the orbital magnetism arising from the Berry phase in a topological magnet. The third um, important correspondence we think is uh, uh, about the unusual lattice geometry. That unusual fermions can usually arise from lattices with special geometry, including the honeycomb uh, lattice. The best example is a graphene uh, that has a Dirac fermion. Recently, we have put some effort in the research of Kagome lattice systems. And there can also be Lieb or other carrier lattice that features uh, topological fermion. For Kagome lattice system, we find that uh, the direct tight bending model, considering the nearest neighbor hoping, will directly give rise to the band structure like this. It includes a uh, direct fermion and the brain zone boundary and a perfect flat band. So the flat band will give the system stronger interactions. So this is indeed a good system to have both geometry, geometry interaction, and topology, similar to the twisted bilayer graphene. So all, in, all the, in, both the, uh, in both systems, this, uh, the interplay between these three key ingredients will give rise to a, a lot of interesting many-body or topological phenomena. And for the Kagome lattice system, there are a variety of uh, families with different magnetic structures where we have uh, studied antiferromagnetic magnetine, paramagnetic um, cobaltine, ferrimagnetic terbium uh, 166, and hard ferromagnetic cobaltine sulfur, as well as uh, soft ferromagnetic iron tin. We call it soft because the magnetic direction can be easily varied by uh, using a very small external magnetic field. So it's a soft magnet. Uh, Jashing. Yeah. Can I ask this flat band picture you show, is this a generic theoretical picture yeah. or this is a specific to one of these material? And how in yeah. reality, how flat is it uh, say compared to? Yeah. Um, so um, uh, we, we, we need to have a, yeah, that's a very important question. So this is only a tight bending model, considering only the nearest neighbor uh, hoping. But in reality, we have more uh, element in the material. So of course, the, the Dirac seems to be more robust, but the flat band uh, is a little bit uh, fragile. But the key notion is uh, band touching, this uh, kind of uh, parabolic band touching with the flat band and the gamma point. I think that is a key notion. In, in uh, real materials, I, I will discuss later in cobaltine sulfur where we have uh, some signature of the flat band. It kind of bent, and then uh, because of spin orbital coupling and other orbital hybridization. But the Berry phase effect is a quantized effect. It will exist. So the um, flatness of the flat band, or we can also ask this question, how flat uh, we can call it a flat band. So usually we define its effective mass is uh, one order or two order smaller than the Dirac fermion. Then we probably can say the flat band physics will emerge. So compared with twisted bilayer graphene, if we are looking to their tight bending model, uh, the flat band, of course, is, is similar to the Kagome case that is not spanning the whole brain zone. It's only a portion of the brain zone, the uh, twisted bilayer graphene flat band, but the, still the physics can be dominated by the flat band. But in this Kagome lattice system, um, as we'll show later, the band structure are often more complex. So it's not as ideal as uh, the twisted bilayer graphene. But at the current stage, we are still uh, only perturbing the uh, key physics of the flat band uh, rather than uh, optimizing the flat band physics. I think that's uh, uh, physics of the next stage. 
So one leading question in this topological magnet material or topological Kagome magnet material is that to looking for the Haldane model phase or the chain gap phase. So as mentioned earlier, the Kagome lattice may naturally feature the Dirac fermion. And then with considering out of plane magnetization and uh, spin orbital coupling, especially this King Milli type of spin orbital coupling, then there will open a, a large chain energy gap at the K and K prime point. But how do we look for such a, a material for chain uh, gap visualization? Then we find most of the Kagome lattice material have a tiny problem in that in the center of their Kagome lattice, there is an additional tin atom. So we think this additional tin atom may affect the ideal hole pin, similar to the uh, tight binding case. So then uh, we find that the rare earth 166 system may uh, provide an opportunity in that the large chemical pressure of the rare earth can push the central tin atom out of the Kagome lattice to form a pristine Kagome lattice. So we think that has a better chance. Then uh, for this rare earth 166 uh, system, depending on the exact rare earth element, there can be a variety of uh, magnetic structures. A special case is the turbine, where the Kagome lattice will have uh, outer plane magnetization. That is consistent uh, with the earlier uh, theoretical requirement for the chain quantum phase. So we first look at the turbine 166 uh, system. And uh, the STM study of uh, this material indeed can find a large Kagome lattice. For the Kagome lattice also, we find it's very clean. And for a large area, we do not have a um, defect. So- One more quick yeah. question to clarify. This material, you said these are 3D ball crystal. They are not layered, but, but this Kagome lattice and Dirac cone is still like 2D, is it? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's quasi 2D. That is also shown in the later on transport experiment. That is a quantized, uh, lambda, uh, this uh, quantum oscillation data seems to come system of one uh, cosine or one over cosine theta. Those are uh, quasi two dimensional electronic feature. Yeah, it, because the Kagome, Lattice, um, Kagome uh, lattice, uh, this Dirac electrons seems to be formed by the in-plane d orbitals. So the interlayer uh, interaction is weak. Yeah. So for this material, uh, for the Kagome lattice, if we systematically apply a magnetic field, then we observe uh, strong <clears throat> Landau quantization signals. And uh, we also observe another surface, uh, which is not the Kagome lattice, then we do not observe the Landau level quantization. So the Landau quant level quantization is bound to the Kagome lattice. So in this sense, it's also consistent with the uh, quasi two dimensional uh, nature of the Dirac electrons. So um, the Landau quantization signal also shows uh, square root like behavior and they tend to overlap uh, to a one joint point. So that is an uh, indication of the Dirac fermionless Landau quantization. And since we have a lot of uh, our sequence of spectroscopic peaks, we can, uh, the data is well constrained. We can use a simple analytical model to describe the data, which including a uh, chain energy gap and uh, uh, Dirac velocity, velocity and Dirac energy. And then we found uh, the fitting of this uh, Landau level quantization, we can obtain a large chain energy gap uh, of 34 millivolts. So it's larger than room temperature. And uh, uh, since we have these parameters, we can inversely plot the band dispersion based on the first uh, based on the uh, STM data. So then we found it actually matches with our uh, bulk first principle calculation band structure. Both, in both cases, uh, uh, there exists a large uh, chain energy gap. And uh, we can also image uh, the edge states of the Kagome lattice. Then we find uh, only when we um, perform the imaging within the chain energy gap, then we observe 
uh, robust age states. So and other energies, we do not detect uh, the age states. So this also builds up a uh, bulk boundary correspondence. Thirdly, since it's a trend energy gap, then there must be a very curvature contribution to the anomalous hole conductivity. So based on the turning data, uh, we can estimate the conductivity contribution uh, to be uh, 0.13 quantum hole. And then our transport uh, collaborator systematically measured the anomalous hole conductivity as a function of temperature. And through scaling analysis, they can extract the intrinsic fabric curvature contribution to be 0.14 quantum hole. So that uh, is consistent with the, with the STM's derived data. So this uh, bulk characterization, characterization uh, age states imaging, as well as the barrier curvature uh, connection together uh, builds up the strong constraints for the interpretation of the chain gap phase. We can also uh, research on other features of this magnet including uh, the age states where we use quasi-particle interference to study its age states, we find uh, the age states scattering is strongly suppressed uh, within the chain energy gap. So that is also consistent with the carol nature of the age states, that, that there uh, should not be any scattering at all. And also there can be a full emission a results uh, showing connection with the STM data and uh, our transport uh, collaborators also tell us that it's rare, um, it's very rare to find a magnet that have um, long uh, this quantum, quantum oscillation signals and relatively small magnet field. And their uh, quantum oscillation data also consistent with our STM data in that um, have very small effective mass and uh, it's quasi two dimensional like. And there can also be other first principle elaborations. So uh, the third uh, methodology is that we can use STM magnet field tunability to control and engineer topological matter that is incapable of the uh, technique like photo emission because uh, photo emission cannot operate with field. So early research in this direction is focused on niobium disenonite where uh, people use vector field STM to observe the inclined vertices. Uh, recently, we further extended this technique to study um, correlated superconductors lithium iron arsenic. And uh, we found that if we increasing the C-axis field, there can be a high signal to quasi square vertex lattice transition. And if we rotate the field toward in-plane directions, there can be a elliptical distortion to the high signal vertex lattice. So this also allows us to further calibrate our vector field STM system to study more interesting topological materials. Here shows the example of the uh, topological soft magnet iron tin. We know is that it's a spontaneous uh, magnetization direction is within the Kagome plane. So we first designed the experiment to use a uh, strong, strong C-axis field as a perturbation. Then we find the Kagome lattice have a on your quantum state that has a, a response to this magnetic field. First, it uh, have a large energy shift of 12 millivolts, then it saturate after one Tesla. And if we calculate the energy shift between zero and one, then we find it actually have a enormous large G factor over 200. So this is indeed a large magnetic field response. And further, we found that it's Saturation behavior seems to correlate perfectly with uh, uh, C-axis bulk magnetization. So that indicates um, or tell us that this energy shift could be introduced by the magnetization's directions variation. That could cause a large perturbation to the topological band structure. So we further designed the experiment to rotate a one Tesla magnetic field uh, within the plane. And we further found this state uh, displays a two-fold energy shift. So that is an indication of electronic pneumaticity because uh, uh, apparent crystalline symmetry is three-fold or six-fold. 
and this pneumaticity uh, is further demonstrated by our uh, later on transport experiment by measuring the uh, resistance as function of vector field perturbation. So for STM technique, we can also use uh, the quasi-particle interference to study the scattering geometry. Then we found the spontaneous uh, quasi-particle interference indeed features a uh, two-fold or pneumatic pattern along the small q vectors. So this is along the C, same A axis as the energy shift data. And we further uh, introduce a small C axis field, then it recovers to the six-fold or three-fold symmetry. If we rotate an in-plane magnetic field, then we find this quasi-particle scattering uh, pattern always follows the field direction. So this is a clear indication that is, uh, we can use the magnetic field to engineer or control the electronic scattering uh, geometry. And uh, through uh, our discussion with uh, theoretical collaborators, uh, we found that this behavior can be well explained by considering that the electronic matter features a carol spin texture. Then uh, it will have a magnetization control of its scattering geometry. So to summarize, we found this, uh, there's a quantum state in the Kagome analysis that exhibit uh, anomalous energy shift with the mag vector magnetization. Essentially have a node along the e-axis. That is to say, no matter how large we apply the field along the e-axis, there is no uh, electronic response. So we think that the spontaneous magnetization is along this axis. So it already uh, saturate the uh, potential energy shift. Then the spontaneous uh, Quasi-particle interference indeed shows the pneumaticity along this axis. And with further uh, vector magnetization perturbation, there can be a control engineer of the electronic scattering matter. And then uh, we found through quasi-particle dispersion study, this anomalous quantum state is tied to the, uh, to the quantum state from uh, from a Dirac uh, gap or a massive Dirac branch. It's a lower upper branch and uh, the bottom uh, side. And so that is to say, uh, essentially this energy shift is related with the um, magnetization directions perturbation to the or control of the Dirac gap or Dirac mass. So that we think is the uh, underlying physics. We also researched uh, topological hard magnet cobaltine sulfur. For this material, a key challenge is for STM studies, this material can often have two kinds of uh, surfaces, sulfur and tin. However, they have exactly the same lattice symmetry uh, that is hexagonal and uh, lattice constant. So how do we distinguish these two kinds of surface by STM is a, a key challenge. So we first use crystalline symmetry. That is um, when upon cleaving, when the tin and sulfur meet at an uh, atomic step edge, then there must be such a case that the tin surface is above the sulfur surface and there is no counter case based on the uh, crystalline symmetry. So indeed we have several chances to observe the atomic step edge and then this allow us to identify that the surface with vacancies is a tin surface. Surface with at atom is the sulfur surface. And these two kinds of surfaces indeed have different density of states behavior that can be uh, well explained by the first principle calculations. Recently, we further designed to use 1% indium dopant as a layer selective chemical marker because indium is known to dope into the tin layer but known to the sulfur layer. And for the vacancy surface, we indeed find nearly 1% impurities. So that also uh, reconfirms the aforementioned uh, surface identification. So this is uh, uh, the tin surface. So with knowing the surface, then uh, first question about its electronic structure for us is where does this uh, pronounced peak come from? So from our first principle, since we have a good first principle uh, description, then we 
first look at the first principal data we found it actually arises from a Kagami flat band. This flat band uh, is in touch with a parabolic band in the brain zone center. And with spin orbital coupling, there can open a small energy gap. So this seems to uh, be in good connection with the fundamental Kagami lattice model in that the flat band is in touch with the parabolic band and with considering ferromagnetism and spin orbital coupling, there can open a chain energy gap. Then we use experiment to systematically perturb this flat band peak with magnetic field. Then we find that it always displays a positive energy shift with a negative or positive field. And so analysis this shift rate, we find it actually correspond to an effective magnetic moment of minus three mu B. This is actually um, an unusual number because in first principle calculation, it's a spin up band. So that will only con uh, contribute to positive one mu B uh, effective moment. So the minus three mu B effective moment would uh, tell us that this a flat band state is dominant by a orbital mechanism. And indeed, if we look at into our uh, fundamental model, since there is a chain energy gap, then there must be a um, uh, barrier curvature contribution to the orbital mechanism. The barrier curvature or barrier phase induced orbital mechanism is a long established uh, theoretical uh, concept. And uh, there are further uh, systematic theoretical development in how to calculate this. So use the development, development scheme we put into our first principle calculations to calculate the orbital mag magnetism of this flat band. And then we find it indeed has a negative sign and the magnitude also uh, consistent with the experimental observed value. So this is an indication uh, that this system have both flat band and the orbital mechanism arising from the barrier phase. Yes, uh, indeed, the, uh, this, uh, this physics is also uh, extended to uh, twisted bilayer graphing, where people, people also find the uh, optical mechanism in that system. And uh, uh, that can even lead to the uh, quantum anomalous Hall effect, because the uh, band structure is much simpler, but fundamentally, uh, they are both uh, governed by the same physics that is uh, from the very curvature or very phase induced orbital mechanism. Lastly, I'll talk about the STM capability in probing extreme local effect and the atomic scale. For uh, these topological magnet systems, we also find that the indium impurity Although it itself is a non-magnetic impurity, it can introduce a strong resonance locally. And uh, in the first principle calculation, we find this resonance actually uh, features a spin down because in the spin down channel, there is a fully developed energy gap and this uh, resonance is well protected uh, by this energy gap. But how do we, uh, use our experiment to demonstrate its spin down nature. So we designed a spin polarized experiment. Essentially, we utilize a nickel soft magnet tip. It has a flipping field much uh, less than 0.1 Tesla. So it's a soft magnet tip. And the sample has a effective flipping field around 0.3 Tesla. So we first use a lar relatively large field 0.5 Tesla to polarize both the tip and the sample. Then we uh, systematically reduce the field until minus 0.1 Tesla. And at this point, the spin of the tip get flipped, uh, but not the sample. And we observe an enhancement of the resonance signal. We further reversely enhance the field to minus 0.5 Tesla. And at this point, both the sample and the tip's magnetization get flipped. So uh, at this point, we find the resonance recovers to its original value. So this systematic uh, manipulation of the tip and the sample spin 
allow us to determine that this resonance state indeed features a negative uh, spin. The negative we mean is uh, spin, uh, spin direction is opposite to the bulk magnetization direction. We also researched how uh, more impurities interact with each other. For two impurities, we found it simply split into two quantum state. For triple impurities, it further split into three quantum state. For two, uh, double impurity, we image the DIDV signal or density state signal and uh, this two quantum state, then we find it actually form uh, bonding and anti-bonding molecular orbitals. For triple impurity, it's a similar form bonding and two anti-bonding molecular orbitals. The triple impurity is a very special case because uh, it has three mirror plane. So the three mirror plane by group symmetry analysis, it will tell us that this uh, anti-bonding state should be doubly degenerate. That is also captured by the first principle calculation that is a schema star, the anti-bonding state should be a doubly degenerate state. But why that is split into two quantum states in our data? So that is because the system has both strong spin over coupling and uh, ferromagnetism. And the, the mirror operation of the spin will cause it a flip sign. That is incompatible with the underlying ferromagnetic ground state. So that will lead to an additional splitting of the anti-bonding state is also captured by the first principle calculations. So essentially, uh, the splitting is caused by the ferromagnetism and uh, a spin orbital coupling. So it's very similar to the aforementioned uh, opening of a chain energy gap. So this is essentially a zero dimension chain energy gap, uh, even though we don't have an exotic bulk boundary correspondence. So lastly, uh, if the system has both superconductivity, ferromagnetism, and topology, then uh, we can explore the physics of topological zero mode or the Majorana zero mode. So there has been a systematic experimental uh, development into the artificial systems, including 1D chain and 2D heterostructures. Here, uh, I will talk about another direction that is to looking for the naturally occurring topological zero mode. Uh, in, uh, for example, in ion tyronide cyanide system, we find that the interstitial ion impurities that naturally exist in these uh, systems will generate a robust zero energy state. The robustness of this zero energy state is demonstrated by the experiment that uh, when we use a large magnetic field as large as a Tesla, then we do not see a uh, apparent uh, splitting or shift of this quantum state. So conventional quantum theory tell us that uh, the system, a quantum system cannot tolerate uh, zero uh, robust state sitting exactly at zero energy. So until recent development of the Berry phase effect or topological physics, we know that if the system have a Berry phase, then it actually can tolerate a robust zero energy state in the spirit similar to the uh, zeros lambda level of uh, Dirac fermion. So they are both governed by the Berry phase effect. So in that sense, uh, we judge that the observation of a robust zero energy state may indicate the system have a non-trivial Berry phase or topological issue. Then uh, our theoretical collaborators indeed uh, find by first principle calculations that this system features a non-trivial Z2 quantum topology. And there are also discussions uh, why or how the quantum impurity can introduce a zero mode. Recently, we also uh, designed new experiment to deposit iron at atom in lithium iron arsenic, a superconductor also with a Z2 uh, band topology. And we found if the impurity is deposited exactly into for surface atom in the middle of the four surface atom, then it can also introduce a robust zero energy state that does not split with the vector, vector magnetic field. Another interesting experiment is for the ion telonide selenide film grown on STO, where people observe there are naturally 
uh, land defect. And, and at the ends of the land defect, there can also exist robust zero energy state, which are also great candidate for the naturally occurring uh, topological zero mode. Fundamentally, um, the early theoretical proposal of Carroll's superconductivity is that the vortices will naturally host Marana zero mode. So there are also fruitful discussions along that directions. So lastly, I'll talk about uh, one project uh, about research into the onion in iron-based superconductivity. Because all the iron superconductors essentially not only have um, iron square lattice, but also have onion as a coordination. It's uh, essentially a tetragonal coordination to the iron. But uh, what is the rule of uh, arsenic in the pairing interaction is um, not, is not uh, explored in experiment. This is largely because uh, arsenic's orbital is a P orbital that is often away from the Fermi level. But its ubiquitous structure nature indicated it must have some rule in the pairing induction. So here we designed two um, impurity uh, to research into this problem. The first impurity is the arsenic uh, vacancy on the arsenic surface. The other is uh, for this material, we often have um, iron surface exposed. And then on the iron surface, there are arsenic dimers sitting on top. So this arsenic dimers essentially locally recovers the tetragonal coordination and this locally breaks the coordination. And we can even uh, manipulate the arsenic atom on the surface to extract arsenic dimer and put it on the iron surface to form uh, arsenic vacancy and uh, arsenic dimer at atom. For the full um, arsenic surface, where the structure is complete, then we observe a well-defined surviving gap that is comparable with um, other experiments in gap size. And, and the center of the impurity of arsenic vacancy, then we find it actually uh, form it actually strongly suppress the superconductivity feature. It strongly suppress the superconducting coherent peaks, uh, and simultaneously there arise a sharp of uh, a pair of sharp in gap states within the gap. So this is a typical behavior of the impurity scattering in a superconductor. A more exotic case happens on the iron uh, surface, where observe we observe the so many coherence is completely suppressed, and the so many gap is also uh, much shallower. So that is an uh, indication that a superconductivity feature in this uh, iron surface without arsenic covering is strongly suppressed. This uh, is pretty much similar to the pseudo gap uh, feature in cuprates. And more exotically, we when we put a pair of arsenic on the iron surface, then we find the superending feature locally recovers. The superending coin peak become sharper and sharper and it, the gap also gets deeper. So this is a reverse to the pair uh, breaking effect. So we can uh, call it a local pair recovery effect. So this pair breaking and pair recovery by the local arsenic atoms effectively demonstrate that they are very essential in the, uh, or fundamental in the pairing interaction in these materials. So we also develop an understanding of this uh, physics. Essentially, we consider that the arsenic uh, mediate the hoping between next nearest neighbor ions, because without arsenic, then their elect uh, electrical clouds would even uh, not overlap. So the arsenic essentially builds up a bridge. Next, we consider that the uh, generally discussed uh, as plus minus pairing symmetry that corresponds to a gap function of cosine kx, cosine ky. And the Fourier transform of this function happens to be the pairing induction of next nearest neighbor ion. So essentially there is a geometrical match between the arsenic mediate hoping and the local pairing induction. 
So we think this geometric match will be essential in explaining our experiment. And based on this uh, consideration, considerations, we build up a self-consistent calculation to indeed show that there can be a local pair breaking effect and a local pair recovery effect. So that is uh, uh, our understanding of for this experiment. So since my time is uh, out, I'll uh, code Phil Anderson's. This is probably his last public talk in Princeton. And that time he's asked, uh, what's your best suggestion to the young researchers when they encounter a new phenomenon? Anderson's answer is patience and it can take a lifetime long. So that to me is a very important measurement of new that depending on uh, how long the phenomenon we observe can be understood. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jashin. Uh, thank you. Managed to pack a lot of interesting information results. Um, yeah, a lot of potential. But I think we do have some time for more questions. We've got a few. Yeah. It's most from me, but please, um, questions from audience. Okay, well, maybe let me ask you about uh, the, well, one quick question is in one, one part of the talk, you talk about this electronic pneumatic that you infer from quasi-product scattering IS10, but you don't seem to see the electronic pneumatic in real space image, is that right? Uh, yeah, uh, because the Fourier transform is uh, based on the real space image. These are Fourier transforms, sorry, I didn't display, but this QPI data is basically based on the real space fragile oscillation data. So the, in the real space, I, yeah, I, the I electronic- uh, right. If you just look at real space image, STM images, you don't see a particular pneumatic pattern. I'm, yeah. What I'm getting at, I, I remember, I'm not expert in this, but I think in, in Cupert's people, you know, old work by people like Shivers Davis, they talk about various electronic uh, real space orders. Some of them are also uh, pneumatic like or whatever. That, they are in the real space image. Yeah, uh, in, in, in iron superconductor calcium, uh, um, calcium iron 2, arsenic 2, for example, in their early research, they do find that the pneumaticity often is tied to the structure instability. The, the structure, especially on the surface, can often uh, enhance the orthogonal uh, distortion. In our case, uh, I think this, uh, in our case, we, we find that uh, structure distortion is less than 1%. So um, it's hard for us, uh, our STM to detect that. In, in, in iron nictides, it's more than 5%. So that is easier to detect the structure distortion or pneumatic structure um, also rhombicity. In this case, we do not have a clear experimental evidence for the structure distortion. Okay. But I think it's correlated, should be correlated. Yeah. Usually you, when you have a large electronic um, twofold, it will affect uh, or entangled with the structure distortion. Any other questions? I'm still trying to understand the your native magnetism in a flat band and you measure very Okay, so first of all, what is exactly the meaning of negative? What is negative? And second, are you, direct, are you extracting very curvature from measurement? Uh, or yeah, this is just me, indirect? Yeah, let me, uh, yeah, it's kind of uh, not direct measurement of the very curvature, but uh, the essential is how do, we, how do we understand our experiment? Because the experiment shows uh, this is a spin up state 
but it behave like a spin spin down state is uh, from the energy shift data spin up state uh, for for applied magnetic field it should shift to this direction the other direction but it is shift to the positive energy because we can determine the sign of the effective moment then we assign to whether it's um, correspond to uh, what kind of uh, mu d because the spin up band will only shift to this direction and have a shift rate of a positive one mu b but in experiment we find it minus uh, three mu b or we can say the g factor is minus uh, six for this specific band minus six is a uh, unusual number so in, in our experiment or experience so then uh, we found it's hard to explain in a conventional sense then somehow uh, our collaborators propose uh, there's a berry phase effect to explain because uh, in, in the first principle calculation, they do show the spin orbital coupling introduce a gap. So that uh, from the tight bending model uh, understanding that is usually uh, a, a gap carrying berry phase. And this uh, will have a consequence in uh, introducing orbital magnetism is similar to the twisted bilayer graphene where we, we don't even have the spin of the magnetism but it's purely come from orbital so in this case it have both spin and the orbital contribution but the orbital seems to dominate over spin for this specific flat band but the, we find it uh, do not affect the total magnetization the uh, baby curvature contribution to the orbital magnetism is have very small contribution to the total magnetization because total magnetization we need to accumulate or integrate all the bands of orbital magnetism and spin magnetism so that turn out the orbital magnetism is negligible only for this specific flat band uh, it's large Okay, thank you. So any other questions from? Yeah, may I ask? Okay. Sorry. I would like to ask for this picture where we have there uh, figure F here in this slide. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if I understand then the magnetism comes from the state somewhere around the K point in the, in in the, the middle space. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, kind of unevenly distributed. That is also uh, calculated by the, uh, it's actually we have an analytical expression for the flat band from the tight binding model is like this. The, the gamma point will be um, exactly zero in the tight binding model. And okay. then it somehow have a non-monotonic uh, distribution for the flat but band. But when you do DIDB, you would predominantly access gamma point. Um, um, I don't think so. Oh. Um, yeah, D I don't think DIDV will perturb only the gamma point that um, is not, I don't think that is um, a generic case. But in, in this case, the, um, the flat part, I think it's dom probably dominated by the flat part of the uh, band structure. Okay. It could become, uh, uh, wherever it's more flat, I think it's a uh, contribute to the density states more. But of course, you, you said there can be a uh, can be a factor, correcting factor that is a dense tunneling uh, and a different momentum will also affect by their in-plane momentum size. I think that is also a, a factor. But in this case, I, I think probably more dominant by where the band is more flat, then it has a larger contribution to the density states. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, okay, one more quick question. Your, your uh, zero mode that's measured in iron tubular and selenite, I think you mentioned, I'm not sure that's your, that's the, up to the line defects for the film on the STO, for example. Yeah. That does not require a magnetic field, right? That's a, is that zero field data? The, yeah, these are, all, the, the, these are all zero, the upper three panel are all zero field. They don't require magnetic field. Okay. 
Yeah, that is. What is the meaning of the spontaneous vortex? What is the meaning of spontaneous vortex in the? Ah, uh, that is their, their theoretical uh, interpretation. That is a uh, their theoretical proposal to explain the experiment. So the, that is not our under my understanding. My understanding is uh, kind of different. But uh, we can explain a little bit of their uh, theoretical proposal. Is that since this system have stronger um, stronger spin orbital coupling and the impurity essentially carry a relatively large magnetic moment, uh, 2.5 mu b from neutron scattering. So uh, they find uh, by theoretical method that at the mean field level, if the if the vortex if the impurity can trap a vortex pan type uh, pancake like vortex then uh, its energy can be lowered. So that is their uh, theoretical proposal that the impurity probably trap a vortex. And then the vortex uh, under, uh, so the topological surface state and the interaction of the vortex can introduce a uh, Majorana zero mode. That's their solution to the question why uh, it introduced a uh, zero mode. But I think there, it's an open question. Still, um, it's just one of the proposal to explain the experiment. Yeah. Okay. Any final questions? Well, well maybe if you can answer this quickly. I mean, I like yeah, that yeah. quote, Anderson. <laughs> uh, you quoted from Phil. So uh, you present a huge amount of uh, uh, data and results, uh, what are the least understood? Uh, I'm not yeah, sure what I think, I think this, uh, uh, I think once we have superconductivity in correlated system is uh, least understood, like this zero bus mode, uh, whether it's Marana or not, I think it's still a debating question. Uh, whether the impurity induced uh, zero mode is a Marana zero mode, I think still need some further test. And also, I think this, um, to my understanding, I think this experiment is puzzling us quite a long time. Why the, uh, we've put a local impurity that can recover the spanning order feature, why it recovers the uh, gap feature. That um, we spent a very long time to uh, ask many different uh, theory people, and they came to give uh, different scenarios. But eventually, we find someone can really calculate to reproduce, and probably in publication, we, we choose their scenario to assist us in understanding. But I think this is still an opening question, why, why this um, have such local effect. Essentially, um, what we, I talk about is uh, prefer to highlight the STM contribution, where we see some unique features that other techniques is not capable of. I think for any any technique, they, they, people always thought, I think that's a clear direction. They, they have to looking for areas that their technique can dominate uh, the, the dialogue, right? That's a general spirit, I think. Okay. There are no other final, final questions. Well, thank you very much, Joshi, for a very interesting yeah, interesting. I, I like to talk. interact with them. Even professionals, yeah. These are Thank very, very you. professional you. questions, yeah. And thanks everybody for attending. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.